What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com here to talk about the SketchUp 2020.2 update. So earlier this week, SketchUp released a new update with some new features that I kind of wanted to talk through in this video. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so earlier this week, SketchUp released version 2020.2. So that's the second update of SketchUp 2020 this year. So they came out with the 2020 um, version in January. They came out with an update in April, and now this is another update where they've added a few new features, and I wanted to talk through them. I will link to this blog post in the notes down below. This blog post talks through all of the different features contained inside of this new version, but I thought I'd kind of show you how each one of them works and uh, what kind of difference they make. So the first thing they've added is something people have been asking for for a while. They've added the ability to turn off linear inferencing for the line tool. And so one thing that can get a little bit frustrating inside of SketchUp is sometimes when you're drawing on like a face or something like that, you wanna draw a line that goes to maybe like a point right here when the inferencing keeps like yanking your mouse cursor back along the red axis, right? And so a lot of the time that's really helpful because that helps you draw on axis. However, in this case, it's something Something that's frustrating because you're fighting with it over and over again. Well, what they've done is they've given you the ability with the line tool active to tap either the alt key or the command key on your Mac and note that you want to tap it. You don't want to hold the key down. Um, but if you tap it with the tool active, you can see how there's a little uh, tool tip down here that says toggle linear inferencing. And so if I tap this, what that's going to do is that's going to turn off all linear inferencing. So now you can see how the inferencing is no longer dragging my mouse cursor along um, the different axes, the red, green, or blue axes. And so what this does is this allows you, notice how the on face is still active. So this is still giving you the inferencing on the face, um, but it's not giving you the linear inferencing. And so you can also tap the Alt key again, and this will give you only parallel or perpendicular inferencing. So you can see how the parallel Parallel and perpendicular inferences are still showing up, but the red, blue, and green ones are not. So, and then if you want to turn that back on, you can just tap the Alt key. So, being able to jump into this is something that I think is going to be a really good feature because I think people have fought with that for a while. Um, I will note that in this blog post, they're talking about possibly expanding the idea to be able to turn off other inferencing features. So if that's something you wanna see, make sure to click on this link right here, and that's gonna pop up a link to the SketchUp blog post about this tool, and you can leave a comment letting them know what else you'd like to see from a toggling inferences perspective. So they have also added a native tool for welding edges. So we've talked a lot about welding edges before, right? Um, there's an extension from TIG that we've used a bunch that allows you to weld edges. Basically what that does is if you have edges inside of SketchUp, like for example, let's say you draw a shape like this one with curves and then edges in here and other things like that. Well, these are all in here as individual edges and curves, which is fine, but this can lead to a few issues. So for example, if I was to push pull this up, notice how you get a number of different lines in here along this face that you then have to go clean up. And let's say that your curves got exploded into individual edges, like this one did over here, then this gets even nastier, right? Because you have to go through and you have to soften smooth all of these, and it can just really be a pain. Well, what they've done is they've given you the ability to select a group of edges. So in this case, I'll double click, then do a shift click to deselect the face. You can right click on these edges, there's now an option in here for weld edges. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna take these from individual edges and it's gonna weld them into a single curve, right? So now if I click on this, this shows as a curve. Well, now if I push pull this like this, you can see how I get a smooth face in here. And so that also works over here for curves like this one. So select the edges and then right click on them, weld edges. And now if I push pull that up, I get a smooth face in here. So having the weld edges function as a native tool inside of SketchUp, I think is a really good thing. I'm interested to see if more functions from extensions get added as native tools in SketchUp as we move forward. That's gonna be something that's gonna be kind of interesting to watch. And notice how that also works for things like extensions. So for example, um, if you remember the path copy tool copies objects along a path, but you always had to weld edges because if you select multiple curves, 
and then try to copy along the path with that extension, it doesn't work. However, if you were to weld these edges by doing a shift click, right click and weld so that they're a single curve, now that extension can copy things along that full path like this. So again, I think having that as a native tool is gonna to be a really good thing inside of SketchUp. So in addition, they've also added the ability to control line width, color, and pattern by tag in layout. And so I, I think they're getting closer to full um, line weight control inside of layout, which I think is a good thing. The way this works, and by the way, there is a note in here, which I will link to in the notes down below, that takes you to the page where they actually talk about this function. But basically what you do, and so let's say we have this example model right here. We're gonna send these over into layout, which I've already done. And what I've done is I've tagged each one of these with its own kind of tag. So for example, I put the line on a line tag. I put the rectangle on a rectangle tag. I've put this floor plan on a floor plan tag. And then this one, I will go ahead and I will put on a wall tag. And so now if I go into layout and I look at these, under the SketchUp model section, there's a section in here for tags. And so within the tags, there's now the ability for each tag to affect the dashes and also the thickness of lines in here. So for example, let's look at this first line. So if I select this line, click on this, and then click the drop down, I can adjust the line weight by clicking on this right here and then giving it a thickness. So let's say I wanted this to be a five point line. I could click on okay, well this line which is on the line layer is now getting styled with that additional thickness. So the rectangle, let's say I wanted to add dashed lines around the outside. I could add dashed lines by selecting this option right here. Um, let's say we wanted to adjust the color. We could do that right here. So let's just say we wanted this line to be blue. Then we'll come down here and click on OK. Now everything on the rectangle layer is going to have its lines styled like this. So for our wall, we could do maybe a dash like this, make it thicker, give it a color. So this really does allow you to control the way your lines look inside of layout. Whoops. And then for our floor plan, we could give it, we'll just call this one a different line thickness. So you can see how I can style these directly in layout. Now, one thing at the moment that this doesn't do that I wish that it did is it doesn't work on section planes. So if I was to go back into SketchUp, let's go ahead and let's put a section plane through this wall like this. And then we'll just save our model to update it. And so what you're gonna notice when we update this is when that section plane is taken through the wall, the section plane, because it doesn't actually see the lines at the top of the wall from our camera view, those line weights aren't being applied in here. We've basically taken a section cut through the top of the wall and so it doesn't have any lines to show in here. So at the moment, this really works best with more of a 2D workflow. Um, there are some workarounds in this. So if you wanted to take like, if you wanted to create like a face, right? at the level of that section plane or something like that, you could do that. So there are more things that need to be worked on here, but I think we're moving in the right direction when it comes to line weight control inside of layout. So in addition, and I haven't had a chance to test this one yet, they've made some changes to the way copies are created inside of layout. So now um, it previews the transformations instead of uh, drawing them in real time. So it's just kind of a performance increase to make uh, making copies of things a little bit more efficient and uh, probably a little bit faster inside of layout. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about is the ability to bring in high resolution images using near map. And so the way that that works is let's say that we have our example file right here and we were to click on add location. So I'm gonna click on this button right here and I'm gonna find a location. And notice how when you bring this up now, there's an option to see high resolution coverage. And so high resolution coverage, what that means is that means that these are areas where you can download high resolution near maps um, or near map data into SketchUp. So those are gonna be ultra high resolution images. And so let's say we were to pick a location like 
it doesn't really matter. We'll go ahead and pick a location right here. So let's say you wanted to bring in this building with this parking lot. So what you would do is you do the same thing you do you did before where you click on select region, but then it's going to ask you to select a provider. So Digital Globe is going to be your free information that you can bring in, right? That's going to be kind of your lower resolution map data that you can bring in, but there's also an option in here for near map. So if you click on near map, and so what this is gonna do is this is gonna give you the ability to bring in high resolution images from near map. And you can adjust the level that this is being brought in. So notice how as I bring this up, this is creating a certain number of tiles in here. So as I move this, you can see how I can adjust this in order to select a location. And what this is gonna do is this is going to allow you to purchase tiles. And so basically what you're doing is you're purchasing this data from near map and you can adjust the resolution of that being brought in by adjusting this little slider right here. Notice that there's a minimum purchase of 200 tiles, which this is currently showing to be about $8. And so really what this is, is this is a data link to an external provider, which is why there's an additional fee associated with this. But those near map images are really high resolution. I've used them in the past. So if you do have a site where you need higher resolution images, this is a great way to get them. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Are you interested in these new features? Are you excited about any of them? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.